Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode on the Vest3D channel. And tonight, what we're gonna discuss is the O drive system and how to make it work with a 3D printer. Um, we're gonna go over the wiring, how to connect it. We're gonna go over how to configure it and, and with the tool, the O drive tool, uh, how to tune it how to um, basically everything that, that you need to know uh, to make it work with the 3D printer. So I'll go over that with you and uh, we're gonna start with the wiring. And before we go to the wiring, I just want to mention that I recommend using a at least two to one gear reduction system. Uh, right now I'm using a two to one um, and, and you'll understand that later in the video, but keep in mind that the faster the motor can spin, um, the better it will be. So having a reduction makes the motor spin faster. So as for wiring, um, on my side, you, you should get yourself pretty good uh, wires uh, for, for the motors. Um, I've used gauge 12 size um, they're they're beefy wires. Um, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but they're they're big wires, um, flexible silicon wires. I've decided to use gauge 12 because I'm running uh, a lot of uh, amps on the motor, set to 60 amp limit. Um, and also the reason why is because the the, the electrical connector that comes with the O drive motors, they are they are big and. Um, where you actually gonna solder your connector. Um, it fits really good when you use gauge 12, but I think you, you, you'd you be okay with gauge 14, but I wouldn't go lower than that. So that's about all you're gonna need for wiring and some uh, probably to connect the step and direction pins, you're gonna need at least four wires. So um, that's about it. Well, we're gonna go on the computer and I'll show you how to hook them up, connect everything, make uh, the, the, the first connections to the motor, how you actually set up the power supply and that kind of stuff. So before we go to the wiring, uh, let's discuss about what you will need to do that setup. So if you go on the odriverobotics.com, um, you will need to buy the controller, obviously. It comes with the, the braking resistor a 2 ohm 50 watt resistor I think and you can buy the motors directly from O drive um, the 270 kV is the one I'm using there uh, the size of them is about the NEMA 23 size so consider that in your printer build if you want to go that way but if you want to use a even bigger motor um, this is a 6374, it's a 150 kV. KV means um, number of rotation per volt. So if you are running 24 volt system, uh, I'm running 48 volts on, on the O drive. So 48, multiply that by 270 and it gives a total maximum speed of 12,960 uh, RPM per minute. Uh, uh, is it per, per second? No, that's RPM, RPM. So with the 150 kV, it's even better for 3D printers because it can spin lower with more torque. Um, however, they are beefier, bigger. And what that means is more inertia, more vibrations, more. So I don't know which one would be best for your needs. Um, the smaller one, the bigger one. There are also other motors you can buy out there. They're just uh, three phases motors. So that's the one I've used because they are smaller. It fits better in my setup. Um, and also, if you go with that one, uh, if you click on it, it also comes uh, with the uh, enclosure that you can print. Uh, you can find a file right here. But also, if you'd like, instead of printing that in plastic, you could also buy the NEMA 23 faceplate um, aluminum. It's just, uh, I think, a better better option. So uh, this is what I got with these motors. 
and you're also going to need two encoder these are 8192 cpr encoders cpr uh, means um counts per revolution so there is 8192 different position it can sense on on the motor shaft so that's the resolution of the encoder you could go with much higher encoder if you have the budget those are 40 bucks i think they're reasonable i think personally that that they're enough but maybe more resolution not not for resolution but maybe to help with other issues that this system might encounter might be a good idea to buy a uh, higher resolution encoder but this is what i i have it works super good for me um you're also uh going to need i, I highly suggest you also buy the st link uh this is the little usb guy here this is going to be really useful to flash uh the board the o drive board even though you can flash it with the usb port the normal usb port um, I've had issues with that and I had to use the ST link. It, it, it's using three wires that you connect on the on the pins on the board to flash the new firmware. Um, useful. I, I suggest for nine bucks you buy that as well. Then I recommend also getting two uh, ferrite, ferrite, I don't know the pronunciation, but those two rings, they will help with noise on, on the system. Um, and they suggest to make three turns inside the the ring um, but in my case since I'm using gauge 12 wiring uh, it, it's just not possible I was only able to get one turn and this will eliminate noise apparently big motors like that make noise electrical noise EMI we call that so one turn will reduce that two turns and three turns is better but yeah I could only make one turn because it's really tight inside but at least one turn is better than nothing. So they are cheap enough uh, to get to. Um, so that's what you need. Uh, you don't need the USB isolator because we're not going to connect the 3D printer through I, uh, USB port. We're going to use uh, step and direction pins. So you don't need that. So the board, the motor, um, the two encoders, the ST-Link to be able to flash the, the firmware. It comes pre-flash with the um, the firmware already, but we'll discuss uh, later why I suggest you buy that because you're going to need to flash at some point. Um, so that's about it, what you need. And you can still buy a nice sticker pack to <laughs> stick on your printer um, and show off that O-Drive uh, system. So that's about it of what you need to buy. Okay, so for the wiring, really simple. If you go on the, again on the O-Drive Robotics, there is that picture right here that shows you how to connect it. Uh, very obvious stuff, easy to do. Um, power supply, the DC power supply goes right here. I'm using a 48 volt power supply because I'm using the 56 volt O-Drive system. That, that's the one you should get um don't don't get the 24 volt unless you are stuck with the power supply of 12 volts but i highly recommend going with a better power supply higher voltage they perform just better at higher voltage so i run them at 48 volts and and one important thing to note here is that if you drive the o drive with a different power supply than the one that is driving the 3d printer board you need to connect both um v the uh, a dc ground the v minus the black wire you need to jump it between the two power supply and connect them together if you don't do that there's a big chance you fry the board um and and that will just give them a ground reference for both boards so when the step and direction pins are connected um it has a zero voltage or ground reference between the two boards really important stuff so I have my 3D printer board running on 24 volt and the O drive on 48 volt and I jump a wire between the two power supply DC minus uh, the V minus the negative between the two so they both share the same ground. Now the motor is really simple. Um, you could, there are three faces, connect the three wires. It don't really matter what, uh, wh where you connect them. Um, 
Worst case scenario, you can switch the wires if it doesn't spin the right way. Or there's a way also in the firmware to change the, the rotation when it's going to try to find the index. So it uh, doesn't matter. Just uh, make sure you connect them. Uh, I, I would recommend connecting them the same uh, the same way on both uh, M1 and M0 controller. Then the braking resistor, uh, really simple also. Uh, connect it to that middle place there. This is uh, going to be helpful. This is where it's going to, when, when the motor stops, accelerate, decelerate, it's going to generate uh, current. It's going to generate energy, and that energy, it needs to go somewhere or it will overheat. This is where it's going to go. And the braking resistor see that as the same thing as uh, electric cars when you hit and jump on the pedal brake um, the motor stops but it still spins because the um, the inertia keeps going so that energy is regenerating the batteries in this case in the o drive it doesn't regenerate anything but the power goes back to that resistor and this will uh, generate heat so make sure that you place it to a place where it can accept heat. On my side, it's mounted directly on the aluminum panel, which act as a giant heat sink that barely, barely heat up on my, on my side. Then the two encoders, uh, again, they're, they're really uh, easy. Um, connect them as the picture is showing. There's a gap between the two. So... Uh, the first one goes directly, the black wire is the ground, so make sure you align the grounds uh, properly. There's one pin left on between the two. Other than that, um, this is how it's going to be connected, uh, the main system. Now we need to hook it up to the printer. And this is done through... Um, so why does it keep doing this? Sorry, guys. Ah, where are you? Okay. So it, this is when I zoom in. Yeah, that sucks. Okay, so you see pin one, pin two, pin seven, and pin eight. Those are the pins that are pre-configured with the stock firmware to be step and direction pins. So uh, pin one is step and pin two is direction. Same thing with seven and eight. This is for... Um, M1 and M0. It's also um, it's also specified on the O drive website. If you go under docs, under um, pinout, I'm gonna de-zoom a bit. Yeah. So the GPIO pin number one is axis zero step. Pin two is axis zero direction pin. Same thing for uh, axis one direction and step and direction. So you have that, you cannot forget they are configured already. Um, you can remap them as needed if you don't want to use them, but this is by default what they are. So I, I stick to that on my side. So now uh, pin, pin one, step, pin two, direction, same thing with seven and eight. Now you need to bring those wires to your 3D printer board um, on mine, I'm using a, um, a SKR 1.4 and um, remove the, 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 the driver. You don't need a driver because the O-Drive board will, will be driving the motors. So remove the driver and set the, um, set the board to um, step deer mode. If you don't know what that is uh, on the SKR, there's a couple jumpers you need to switch. Um, so you, this is the picture right here. You need to switch all the, um, or, or you can also use just, um, well, no, let's just stick to that one and, and put all the wires into step direction mode. So all uh, jumpers to the right side and it doesn't need the reset pin but the rst pin but yeah just put jumpers everywhere <clears throat> there this is for skr it will be different for your board no matter whatever um, printer board you're going to use so just make sure you don't use uart mode uh, if there's one jumper to switch between the two select that um, it, it can be called also spi mode i think so just switch that 
and don't use UART because it's not going to work. Um, that being said, now we need to know where to hook it up. What are the step and direction pin for the X and Y? And it's really easy to do, to find. So this is a normal 2209 driver. As you can see, direction pin, step pin. It's the same thing for every driver out there. The first one is the direction pin and the step pin. So if you uh, look back on, on the 3D printer board, it's going to be the first pin here. That's going to be direction. That's going to be step. So you're going to hook that up to your O drive board um, to these TPIO pins that we just uh, showed right here. And you will be done. So there's nothing more. It sounds a bit complicated, but it really is not. So that's how you hook it up uh, between 3D printer board and the O drive board. Maybe one day there's going to be another way of communicating between the 3D printer board and the O drive system. But for now, it, it's need, it needs to be in step and direction mode. Uh, there's also CAN bus that the, the, the O drive board can support. Um, Maybe that is something that Clipper in the future can directly work on the board using the USB um, the USB port. We'll see. So that's why I'm doing this video so more people can play and test that. And maybe in the future, we can make it a lot better for 3D printers. Um, so that's how you hook it up. Okay, so now we will go ahead and configure that O drive. And uh, we are going to need some tools in order to configure that O-Drive and to connect to that board. So if you go on the O-Drive website, in the documentation section, on the getting started, you'll see that uh, you need to install Python 3. And they, they suggest two different Python. You can go with the Anaconda version or the standalone Python version. Uh, since I had already Python installed on my computer, I went with that option. But they both work good. Uh, I recommend the normal standalone Python. I don't like the Anaconda one. So they say to install the 3.8.6. And you can find that version right here. You install that. You follow the instructions on how to install it on, on Windows. Um, and follow the instructions there. And you will be able to install the O drive tool. And then uh, once you have the O drive tool installed, you just run it simply by typing O drive tool. If you run it through PowerShell, don't forget to put dot backslash before the executable command. So there you go. Obviously, you need to have your USB cable connected to that uh, O drive board. And you will see that we are connected to O drive and that's the serial number. Now, the O drive tool, before we go in uh, deeper into the configuration, I'm just going to give you a couple tips on how to use that O drive tool. It's really simple. Every command starts with ODRV0. Okay. And if you don't remember a command, the nice thing about it is that you can use that tab, T A B, that tab key, that left tab key on your keyboard. If you do that, it's going to list all the commands, the available commands on that level. So for instance, I just start by typing O, then I hit tab. It's going to tell me all the available commands starting with O. So normally all the commands, all the ones that we're interested in start with O drive and then the number of the board. So in my case, and probably in your case, you're only going to run one O, o drive board unless you run more than two motors because there are two axes per, per board. So in our case, O drive zero, if I had two O drives, it would be O drive zero, O drive one. You can connect to um, different O drives like that. And you can see they're going to be listed, connected as O drive zero. So in our case, O drive zero. From there, you hit the dot key. And if you don't know what you're doing, you can always hit that tab again, double tab. And it's going to give you all the available commands to that level. And the way that this menu works is that it's divided by... Um, well, the first thing, you have the general configuration. If you tap config, then again, you have all the configuration for the entire board, which are not specific to any axis. So it's not configuring any of the axis. It's, config it's a configuration that is valid for the board. And then 
you could also go by axis. So you have two, axis zero and axis one. Once you go in that level, you can also double tab and you're gonna show all the available command. So the way that the tree is working, so you have the normal tree, which is everything not related to any axis. Then inside both axes, it's divided in three. You have controller, so all the commands for controller and config, if you have to go config, you have controller, you have encoder, and you have motor. From there, you can control all those three and all the configs and commands related to those. So again, divided by this is general configuration, not access specific. Then you have access specific command. Access and, and, and those axes are divided by three. So motor, encoder, and controller. So now that you know how to navigate inside that O drive tool, we're going to go ahead and start configuring it. Just a quick note of what we're doing tonight. Um, I am myself running a firmware that is a release candidate. It's a beta firmware. It's not the one that you'll get when you buy that O drive board. Um, the one that runs on your O drive board when you buy it is the master firmware, the one that is not beta, but it's the master release. Um, I'll explain later why I've chosen to use that release candidate, the RC1. I'm gonna call that RC1 from now on. Why I've chosen to use the RC1, I'll tell you later. But for now, just keep in mind that it there's a couple differences between the master and the RC1. And we're going to start to configure that. So the first command we need to tell the O drive is that we have a break resistor. Remember that 50 watt, 2 ohm um, that we connected in the back? So by default, we need to set it by default. By the way, every command you run, if you delete everything and just run that command, it's going to tell you what it is currently set. Oh, by the way, I need to erase my configuration. So I start from scratch. There, there you go. Brand new O drive board. It reconnected. So let's again run that command and you'll see by default it's false. So it by default it's set to false. There's no brake resistor connected. So I need to set that to true. This command you don't need to run on the master release version because it's already set to true. Same with that next command we're going to run. It's to tell what kind of resistor we have. We have a 2 ohm. So brake resistor equal 2. Bingo, it knows that it's a 2 ohm. You don't need to do that on master because that would be the default. Um, next, we need to also tell, and this is valid only for the RC1, um, you need to tell what will be the maximum negative current. And what is negative current? It, when the motor stops, they, they, they generate current because that's what they do. Um, and, and that current, if you don't set that maximum negative current, by default, it is set to a value that is way too low. Those motors generates more than this number in amp. So what I do, I set it to minus five. Um, the default on the master, I think, is minus one. So you could probably set it to a safe value of two, three. I just went to five. This is just so it doesn't air out on you. Um, again, this is only valid for the RC1 version. You don't need to do that on the master release. The next command is also only specific to RC1, and that is the spin out power margin. It's set to 10, but I've talked to O-Drive developers and there is a bug. This is a new, uh, this is a new config on the new, on the new firmware as it was not there before. And they just told me there's a bug. It doesn't work properly. Just set it to a super high value. Um, and I do 100,000. I do this on both axes. I don't pretend to understand what that command does. Um, it's just a spin out. It just calculates how much, I don't know, how much it spins. And uh, there's a bug in that function. So they're going to work on it. They're going to fix that. This version of RC1 is still better. So it's probably not ready to use. I still use it because it, it the new feature is, is so awesome. I needed that. And I'll tell you later about it. So all those commands are RC1 specific. Now we're going to start with the commands and configuration of the Axis 1. So we're going to configure Axis 1. The first config we need to tell 
the O drive is how many, what, what is the encoder, the CPR, the count per revolution. The ones that we bought from O drive is 8192 counts per revolution. So there we go. We've set that. Next thing we need to set is the maximum uh, current when we do calibration. So every calibration commands, you can tell what maximum current you want to run. Default is 10. Next thing is also a current limit. Um, how much would be the maximum that you allow current? So in my case, I do 60 amp maximum. This is just a maximum. If I set it to 50 or anything lower, it aired out on me because it, it was using more than that. At 60, I'm fine. Every, every speed that I run on a 3D printer was fine at 60. So just use 60. If you have good wires, it shouldn't be an issue. The next thing to configure um, is the number, what they call that pole pairs. What is that is the number of magnets found in the motor. In my case, I use the 270 kV from the O drive uh, that they're selling. And if you turn the motor manually with your, your hand, you're going to feel every, um, every little step on the motor. Those are the magnets that you encounter when you rotate the, uh, the motor. In my case, there are 14 magnets, but they're counted in pairs. So that's seven pairs. There you go. Seven. Next thing to do is to set up the torque constant. If you don't know what that is, let's go back to the O drive. Um, if, if you go in the O-Drive documentation, getting started, this is what we're, we're doing right now. We've set up the braking resistance, the, config, uh, the pole pairs. The torque constant, what is that? This should be set to 8.27 divided by motor kV. Let's use my calculator. 8.27 divided by 270. Here you go. Copy, paste that. Well, it's already in my file here. So this is what you need to set. Oh, sorry, I clicked it twice. So there we go. Torque constant is set. Next thing to do is what kind of motor you want to run. Um, there, only, there is only two choices, uh, motor type high current, or if you read the documentation, it's going to be either high current or motor type gimbal. You're not going to buy a gimbal motor. Um, this is a high current motor that you're buying. I think in the master version, you don't need to specify that by default. Let's take a look at what is default. It's set to zero. So if I, if I set it to high, high motor type, high current, I think it's still going to be set to zero. So I'm not even sure that you need to set that. Yeah, it's set to zero. So that is default also in RC1. You can run that command. It's not going to hurt just to make sure it is set to a motor type high current. The next command we need to tell is um, the velocity limit of the motor. And that limit, you can use my config or you can use your own. What that is, is the maximum rotation per second that you're going to allow the motor to drive. In my case, um, I'm running a two to one uh, gear ratio and my final drive is uh, 20 T. So what that means for me is that every full rotation of the motor will give me 20 millimeters of movement. And my goal with this setup is to be able to run a thousand millimeters per second. So if you do the math, a thousand millimeters per second divided by 20 millimeter per turn, give me a rotation of 50 turns per second. I've set it to 55 just to be on the safe side. I don't want it to air out. Um, so 55 is my limit. That's going to allow me to run at 1,000 millimeters per second. You don't need to use that value. If you don't plan to go 1,000, just use something that you'll be comfortable with. My case, 55 it is. Come on. There you go. Okay. Last thing we need to set on the axis zero is we're going to tell O-Drive that the encoder that we're using is using an index. What is an index? An index is... Um, see it as a reference point for that encoder to know where to start to count position. So when you power up the, um, the O drive, the motor will spin all the way up until it finds that index. Then it knows that it can start from here. This is kind of, it might not be the, the good word there, but it's kind of homing the motor. So it knows 
where the zero is basically it's not probably not the right way to to explain that but that's the easiest way i found how to explain that to you so it finds the index so we tell that yes we do have an index so use it so set that config to true we're done with axis zero and i'm going to show you another tip in o drive um you could run all these in one big shot copy paste so that's what we're going to do with axis one uh, i just went all the way one by one just to explain you what we're doing but um Oops, we're going to do that in one big batch for Axis 1. Uh, so copy, paste. As you can see, it pasted all the commands. We're going to run that, and boom, it executed at a, at a one batch command. So that's cool. You don't need to copy and do that one by one. Just go ahead, grab that, copy, paste, copy, paste. And that's uh, really fast to do. Okay, those are the basic commands to get started. Um, the next thing to do is to save that configuration. Um, in the normal master version, what you do is you just uh, copy paste that. The command is uh, odrive dot, well, odrive zero, then save configuration, and it always ends with a double parenthesis. Um, the release candidate version, RC1 that I'm using, as soon as you hit that save, it's going to reboot the unit. It doesn't do that for the master version. So you have to execute that O drive reboot command. Not a thing that is different in the RC1 version is that it will not allow you to save unless both axes are idle. So you need to tell um, O drive to set the, the motors in idle mode. We're going to show you uh, that a bit later. But for now, they are idle because we have not used them. We just started configuring them. So now we have configured two axes. Um, we're going to go into the calibration. So um, we're going to do that right now. So the, the calibration is really easy to do. Um, you can do it um, manually. You can calibrate motor, encoder, controller, um, and, and with three different commands. But there's one big command that you can run that's going to do all that for you. And the command is right here, access state, the requested state is access full calibration sequence. We're going to run that for access zero. Make sure that your motors are not connected to your printer. I mean, not connected. In my case, they are belted to um, the printer. I've removed that belt. They can spin freely without moving the print head because you don't want to crash your print head anywhere on the printer. So I'm going to run that and it's going to make a sound. You're going to hear that. That's motor calibration. Then it's going to spin to find, um, uh, it's going to calibrate the encoder and it's going to calibrate everything. It's going to do a full turn left and right. It's going to find that index and it's going to do a full turn on both sides. And it doesn't take much. It's already done. I'm going to show you that in the video. It's, I'm going to play that video right at the same time here. So we've done axis one. You can do both axes at the same time. So you can copy paste, boom, the two commands. But in my case, I just wanted to show you one at a time. So we're going to do axis one right now. You're going to hear that beep. There you go. It's going to spin, find the index, do a full calibration. So now that we have calibrated those motors and controllers and encoders, we don't need to do that every time we boot up the O drive or the printer. So we're going to tell the system that first of all, we have the encoder config pre-calibrated to true. Set that to true. We're also going to tell the system that on startup, you want to search for that index. You have to do this. There's no way around that. What it's going to do, and that's something you need to note, is you always need to make sure that your print head has enough uh, clearance to move because it's it's going to move to a maximum of a full turn because it needs to find that index and it's somewhere in that full turn. It's rarely going to take a full turn because it's going to be somewhere uh, again in that 360 angle. It's going to find it. But again, you need to make sure your printer is at a place where it, it's able to, to find that index. So we're going to set that to true. I'm going to show you a full boot up sequence when we're done. And what I do before I start up the printer, just to make sure we're not hitting anything on the printer. Um, next thing we say is 
at the startup, we want the motor pre-calibrated. So startup motor calibration, um, sorry, we're gonna set the calibration to true. So it's that beep sound that you hear, it's gonna be every time you boot up the printer. There is a way to make that pre-calibrated, but heck, the printer is so long to boot compared to O-Drive system. It takes probably 20 to 25 seconds for my printer to boot, where the O-Drive takes only five seconds. So there's no point of skipping that step. It's best to just do it every single time that you power it up. It's just a beep. So it also tells me that the O-Drive is powering up. I like to have that sound at startup. So set that to true. The next thing you need to tell is when you start up, you start up as a closed loop system. So set that to true. What that means is when it's going to boot up, it's going to be ready in close in closed loop. So I'll show you what that does also. Now that we've done that, I'm just going to copy paste every commands in one big batch to do the axis one. So we have configured how uh, we have calibrated the motors, encoders, and um, encoder motor and uh, well the full calibration and then uh, we need to save uh, in my case I again I said to be able to save it and release candidate one you need to have both motor in uh, idle state and I'm gonna hit that save button and it's gonna reboot automatically if you're on the master just run that save and then that reboot command and it's gonna reboot and see you heard that sound motor uh, the system is rebooted and um, what you're gonna see now and I'm showing that on the camera right now just test try with your hand m try to move the motors with your hand you see they have they offer a resistance and if you move them they will always come back to that same position that they were set to to be so that's closed loop mode it will always work hard to go back to their position so you know they are in closed loop right now because you can feel that resistance and it's going back to position. So congratulations, you have completed the calibration and configuration. Now we're gonna test if they are working fine. And the way we do that is run this test right here. So by default, the O drive is booting and it's pre, pre set up to be in a position mode. There's a couple mode you can run those motors. We are interested only in position mode because that is what the step in direction will use. We instruct positions. We don't instruct uh, torque. We don't instruct velocity. We just instruct position with steps and direction come in. So we're going to tell the motor to turn one full, uh, full rotation and see if this is going to work. Bingo, it worked. Um, and you know that works. You can do the same thing with axis one just to make sure they're going to work. And it did move a full turn, as you can see here on the video. So we've completed that part. We are fully calibrated. We have our startup sequence. So when they boot up, they will be pre-calibrated. The motor will find, the encoder will find its index and is going to boot up in closed loop control. So now the next part is tuning and I'm going to show you that. Now for tuning, I'm going to give you two options um, and I'm going to show you how I prefer to do mine. Um, if you go on the odrive robotics.com in the documentation, go into control and tuning, you're going to find out the procedure um, tuning right here. Um, how to set, uh, how to do the tuning. So the first thing you have to do is to set your VAL integrator to zero. And while you could do all this through the command line with the O-Drive tool right here, there is another tool that I find, I personally find that is easier um, to use. Uh, it's a GUI, a GUI tool, um, graphical user interface tool instead of the command prompt. It's a beta version, so it's a bit buggy, but it's, it's, it's still nice to use. If you want to use um, those commands inside the O-Drive tool on the command line, uh, they, all the commands are here. It's gonna be in the document, I mean the comment section as well. 
Um, and, and you can also start the live plotter. You're going to need that plotter. What the plotter is, is a nice graph, a graphical um, interface that's going to pop up if you do that. Let's just uh, show that to you right here. Oh, come on. And it's going to create a graphic. Um, yeah, there we go. So that gives you the measurement of, um, and we've set it, that is going to be the encoder position estimate versus the controller position estimate. So see that as the requested position and what the encoder will read for position or estimate as position. So I'll show you what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to open up my O drive tool. Um, uh, sorry, where is it? Uh, o drive GUI. And uh, I'll, I'm also going to put a link in the comments below to where to get that O drive uh, GUI. Um, keep in mind that it's still better. You're going to need uh, to install a couple modules. It's, it's easy to do. Um, just make sure that you have that. If, you, if you're having trouble, just click here and it's going to tell you what you are missing. Um, but in my case, see at the bottom here, the two uh, green axes are green, means we're connected and it's working fine, no error. So you can create dash, but basically there is a, a, a default tuning dash. And see, this is the, the plotter that we just ran. It's the controller input position versus the encoder position estimate. And you have also the same kind of plotter, but the velocity set point and the, the velocity estimate by the encoder. Um, and we're going to show that to you. The, so um, it's only for axis zero here, the default. So if you want to do the same thing for axis one, you need to create yourself a new dash. Um, and you can add controls, you can add sliders and function. I'll show you my personal dash that I use that I uh, like. So I did one dash per axis. So this is the dash, all the commands that I can run. It's easier to type then <laughs> in the O drive uh, tool, command prompt. So we're going to start by the tuning. And again, like I said, we're just going to start the sampling so you can see what's, what's happening. Those values here, the gains, so tuning is tuning the gains. They say to set the, um, config, uh, the integrator gain to zero. So that will be the first thing. Next, they say to make sure you have a stable system. My system is stable. I'm going to start the other camera right here. And record that. Okay, we're recording on the other camera. Um, so we've set the uh, integrator gain to zero. System is stable. As you can see, motor is not doing anything. So now they say increase VEL gain by around 30% per iteration until motors exhibit some vibration. This is what is nice about that tool is that you can configure yourself some sliders. And uh, in my case, I, yeah, you could add a slider for the VEL gain. Uh, I just didn't do it. I can manually do it. So by 30%, we're going to up that to 20. And we're going to check that. It's not vibrating, so we're going to keep cranking that, 0 0.3. It's, uh, I can feel a really, really tiny vibration, but let's do... Yeah, it's not enough vibration to my liking, so... Oh, that is a lot of vibration. So we're just going to back that down. And they say until you reach that, then back down to 20%, uh, to 50%. That's what they say. Let's go back here and back down veil gain to 50% of the vibrating value. So it, it started vibrating around 0 0.3 something. So I think a safe value would be 0 0.2 in my case. That's what I'm using. Um, so we're just going to put that back there. The next thing to do is increase pause gain by around 30% per iteration until you see some overshoot. Um, in my case, I've, I'm not too sure that I was able to reach overshoot. So I'll show you 
at least how I configured mine. So by default, like I said, it's always in position control. And that's what we're going to do now. And that's the mode we need for the step direction for a 3D printer. But those are all the modes. We can control motors by torque. So we say we want that amount of torque all the time. That's what it's going to do. We can say velocity control. Okay, I was not too sure I was recording. Velocity control, where we say, okay, spin at that speed and keep going on forever. And position control is what we use. So we instruct the motor to say, go at that position and keep that position. And then there's the input mode. Default is pass through. Perfect for our testing right now. We're going to do that. I'm using the slider here at the bottom. They can see the um, input position slider. And I'm going to set that to minus two uh, to two. The slider to two and minus two. So that will allow the slider to go from, and I'm not filming the right axis. So let's go to this axis um, and set that to 0 0.2. Okay. So that it's the same value on both sides. Actually, my vibration started at 0 0.4. So back down 50%, 0 0.2. So I still have that slider and you're going to see that on the camera. Um, when I move motor left, right, left, right on the slider, left, right, left, right. Now I'm going to stop the sampling and take a look at the graphic here. We have um, the in blue, we have the controller input position and in orange, we have the encoder position estimate. And you can see they don't match. They don't really match. So there's kind of a delay and it's not performing to what it should be. So we're going to crank that up. Let's try to go to 30 and we're going to start sampling again and move that motor again with the slider. It's a bit sharper, but let's stop right here. You see it's still round. It's not, it's not to my good liking. We're going to keep cranking and go that again we're starting to see something but yeah it's not perfect so we're gonna crank that up again and i'm gonna save you some time i know at a hundred boss gain position gain that it's perfect on my setup so you gotta have to find what's perfect for your setup Now the motor spins so fast, I'm just, maybe I should use higher value here because it's micro, micro step. But yeah, as you can see, it's pretty reactive. I could possibly crank that up 150, but now at 150, you can see in the plot, it starts vibrating. So I'm going to back that down to 100. I think 150 was too much. And right now... I think this is perfect. So uh, stop. We're going to do the same thing for axis zero. I'm going to start sampling. Uh, put that uh, integrator gain to what it was. I think that was the default. Yeah. And we're going to do the same thing. Yeah, at 20 is really not good. We're going to set that to 100. And now it's super sharp, super responsive. That's what we need. So we have set our gains. So this is how you tune it. Now the uh, integrator gain. Um, I, I not super sure I understand. Um, uh, the integrator can be set to 0 0.5. Multiply that by bandwidth. Multiply that by VEL gain. But if I do the math, it's, it's giving me way too high value. I'm not too sure but let's see if we do that i have a uh, let's use my calculator 0 0.5 multiply that by the bandwidth the default bandwidth is thousand now i'm gonna show you right here where is it uh, right here the encoder config bandwidth is a thousand that's the default so multiply that by thousand that gives you 500 and then multiply that uh, by val gain, we found 0 0.2. That's going to give me 100. <laughs> that value doesn't 
makes sense. So maybe I'm not understanding what bandwidth is. So anyway, I what I've played with is 0 0.4 works good on on both sides. 0 0.4, that's what I've said it. Feel free to play with it. If you understand this part better than I do, please comment below in the section. I really would like to understand what I'm doing here and try to tune those motors better. Um, please comment, help me. If more people were gonna get on O drive, more people were gonna understand this and we will be able to fine tune this baby. By the way, side note, O drive 4 is coming, new board, new version. It's gonna come with an auto tune function so you don't have to run all these uh, crazy tuning uh, it's going to be just one big function auto tune and you're good to go so don't be afraid o drive 4 is coming soon it's going to be uh, better than this so for now uh, it, it's it's still good i mean it's still good so that was it for uh, tuning the gains we're done at least to the best of my knowledge now we're going to do the anti-cogging calibration Okay, so now that we have tuned uh, our gains, uh, just make sure you save your configuration and reboot. Um, just want to point uh, that again, that uh, for current, uh, leave the calibration current to 10, that's plenty enough. And for the, the motor, I mean the current limitation, just leave it at a low value. Later when you feel more comfortable and you want more power and you need more speed, etc., you can crank up that value. But for now, the default should be fine. I think default is 20 or is it 10? I can't remember. But 30 is also fine. Um, and before we do the anti-cogging calibration, I've also lowered my pause gain. Um, I think I was having some overshoot, but um, if you look at the sampling now, at 50, it it's responsive enough, I think. There might still be, I don't know if that is overshoot, but I don't think so. I think I, I if you look at it, it's pretty good. I can always crank it after, <clears throat> sorry, after I've done the anti cogging calibration. I just know that if I leave it at 100 on my system with my motors um, at 100 post gain, uh, with all the, these settings, the anti cogging calibration will, will fail. So. There's also that encoder bandwidth that they don't talk about that in the tuning, but the default is set to 1000. And I know for sure, because I've been playing with that, I know for sure when you change that, you can put a higher veil gain before it starts vibrating the motor. So there's a relationship between the two. I don't know anything about it. If someone needs, if, if someone knows and wants to explain to me on how to tune that thing better, please comment below in the section. I'll be really happy to, <laughs> to learn this stuff. Because I'm going to leave the default at 1,000, but I've played uh, from all the way from uh, 0 point something to 4,000. The value there for encoder bandwidth is from 0 to 4,000. So I've been playing with gains. I've been doing lots of tests. It doesn't change uh, a lot on the print. But yeah, you're going to have to play with that as well to see what, what are the best value for you. So before we start doing the anti-cogging calibration, we need to understand what cogging is. And the simplest way to explain you is to show you what it is exactly in video. But if you take your motor and you start spinning it with your, your, with your hand, you're going to feel every magnets, every steps inside the motor. You can feel them pretty easy. And that what is, uh, that's what's going to cause cogging. So cogging happens at lower speed um, when there's not enough. I mean, when the motor is struggling to go past that magnet, because you can feel a bit of resistance when you move it by hand. Then, oh, it's free. Then, oh, another magnet. You can feel all those steps. And I'm going to show you what that does. So in order to show you what that does, um... I'm going to switch to velocity control because that's the easiest way to show you. Um, don't worry, we're going to put it back to position control because that is what we need for 3D printer. Always position control. So now that we are in velocity control, I'm going to do a minus one to one. But I, and I'm going to spin the motor to one turn per second. Um, and I'm just going to put it back to zero because I forgot to turn the camera on. I'm gonna turn the camera on and film that motor. 
So this is going to show you the cogging effect. So I'm going to spin again to one turn per second. And you see that it's spinning free. It's spinning uh, fluid. There's no jerky movement. It's, it's all good. But what happens if we go lower speed? Um, I'm going to lower it down all the way to 0 0.2. Because I know this is where it starts to cog. And as you can see in the video, it's really starting to be jerky movement and that is what cogging is if i go even slower uh it's 0 0.12 you can see it's going to struggle at every magnets it encounters in the full turn and and that is not good imagine printing at that speed with with your printer it's going to cause some serious quality issue and serious issues dot so now you know why I went with a, a two to one gear ratio just so that the motor can spin two times faster than without the, um, the, the, the two to one gear ratio. So the faster it spins, the better, the less cogging you get. But there's still a way to make cogging better and that is the anti-cogging calibration and we're gonna do that right now. So before we do that, I'm just gonna put the motor back to idle. Okay, it stops. And I'm going to put it back to closed loop control. We can start sampling because that's going to help you to see what that's going to do. Um, so we are going, I'm going to set also axis one, same thing. Okay, we're all good to go because I'm going to do both axes at the same time just to save time. The camera is on axis one. I have this button set at the bottom here, start anti-cogging calibration. But see that long big command? That's the same command you want you would run inside the O drive tool. Okay, sorry, I had to go. My son was uh, <laughs> was needing me, so I'm I'm back here. We're ready to start the anti cogging calibration. I'm just gonna restart the camera right here, and uh, we're gonna start filming the motor. So we're gonna start the anti cogging calibration. And I've created myself a, a little button at the bottom, but that command here is the same as you would run in the O-Drive tool. I'm going to put that in the, um, in the comment also, the comment section. So you have all those commands uh, that you can run. So as you can see, we started that calibration. And if you look on the plotter, the graph here, what it's going to do, it's starting from zero position, and it's going to make a full turn. So it's going to go from zero to one very slowly as you can see it's ramping up and what it's doing and that is only a guess but I think what what happens is that it's gonna uh, find all the magnets and when it finds the magnets I think what it's gonna do it's gonna give it more more current or more power to overcome that uh, that cogging effect that you just saw on the camera that is only a guess. I don't know <laughs> if that is how it's going to do it or I don't know anything about it, but I'm guessing that's how it's doing it. Again, if you know that stuff, please comment below. I'm happy to learn. So I'm just not going to waste uh, your time. Uh, both motors are doing their pre their uh, anti-cogging calibration. And uh, it's going to take about five minutes to go from 0, 0.0 to 1.0. So I'll just uh, fast forward the video until it's done and I'll be back with you. All right, it's done. Both axes are done. I think axis zero, oh, axis zero is not done. So we're gonna give it a bit more time. Uh, is it done? Yeah, I think, yeah, it's done, sorry. So the next step is to, um, to save the configuration. And again, on this, uh, on this RC1, I need to set both motors to idle before I run the save configuration. And that's going to reboot. You don't have to click reboot on this version. If you're on the master version, 
you do have to force a reboot. Okay, so we are rebooted. And um, uh, this GUI is a bit... Um, sometimes it doesn't display this properly, so... Um, but um, let's see, anti-cogging, it's set to false, so it probably didn't update. So we're just going to run it from the O-Drive tool. And um, I will check to see if it's configured. So O-Drive, let's do with Axis uh, 1. Axis 1. Uh, it's going to be in controller. Config. Anti-cogging. Okay, so why did it do pre-calibrated? False. Okay, sorry. I forgot before to reboot, um, you need to set pre-calibrated to true. Um, it is enabled right now, but I did a mistake, so don't do that mistake. So before you reboot, um, I did save it. So I think if I can just run that command, uh, hold on, where is it? In here, anti-cogging. Okay, so once it's set, we need to set that pre-calibrated to true. Stupid thing. Okay, on both axes. And uh, we are going to save and reboot. Hopefully I didn't lose my configuration because I did that mistake of not <laughs> setting that pre-calibrated before rebooting. So don't do that mistake. Run that command before rebooting. But we are going to see if that run, if that worked. So, okay. So now, as you can see, it says pre-calibrated true. Anti-cogging is enabled true. So we're just going to exit out of it. And we're going to go back to that GUI. And I'm going to run that test again on velocity mode and see if the cogging is gone. If it's not, then it means that it didn't save my, it didn't save my configuration. Um, but I think, I think I'm okay. We'll be able to see right now. So I'm going to go and back to velocity control. I'm going to turn on the camera so you can see. There you go. We're going to see if cogging is gone or not gone, but, but better. So we're back to velocity mode. And, um... We're going to go, that is 0 0.3. It's still nice. We're going to go back to 0 0.2. This is where it was having cogging. And right now, I think I'm good because it spins a lot better than it was before. You see that. So I'm going to lower that again. Let's go to um, 1.6. And it still is pretty good. Not a lot of cogging. There might be a tiny bit. If we go to 0 0.12, then yeah, that is way too slow. But you can see it's it's still way better than it was before. So 0 0.14 is acceptable, I think. So that would be the lowest speed I would go on that motor because I'm running a, a, a 2 to 1 ratio. So it's going to spin two times uh, slower than that on, on, the main, on the main gear there. So... That's it. We have tuned the anti-cogging. So we're going to just uh, send that to idle and we're going to go to next step. Okay, now that we have uh, tuned or calibrated our, our anti-cogging, um, we need to, tar to start thinking about how we're going to put that to the 3D printer. And um, remember I've said we need to be in position control for the step direction to, to work. Um, however, there is, uh, right now, sorry, the default here, I, I just changed it, but the default is pass-through on the input mode. That's the default. So it's just going to take the steps command, execute that without any modification and anything. There's a better way to run um, a 3D printer step commands, and it's going through position filter mode. And what it's going to do, it's going to filter out and polish um, those steps rates and those steps pulse, I mean, um, 
And I'm only trying to uh, explain that to you. It might not be the best explanation, but just just keep in mind that it's better to use position filter over the pass through without any any processing. Let's say it that way. So this is gonna process the step pulse and make it better. So that's the mode you're looking for. And if you wanna um, see what that is, uh, we're gonna do it. In fact, from the um, from the the O drive tool, because that might be better for you to see. So we are back here. We're gonna run the O drive tool. So we need to switch the mode, the input mode to a uh, pause filter. We're gonna do the two axes together in one command. If I can copy paste properly, there you go. So we have set the input pause filter. Now the next thing to do is to tune that mode. And maybe I should have stayed inside um, the, the, the GUI to show you, but yeah, we need to adjust the input pause filter bandwidth. And let me just uh, go back, to, sorry, let me go back to that O drive GUI because I really want to show you on the camera what that means and what it's going to do. I think it's important uh, to understand the basic behind that mode. So import dash, if you don't do this one, uh, if you don't tune that uh, input bandwidth, you're going to have trouble. So let me switch the camera on again. And record that. So we're going to tune input filter bandwidth. The default is set to two, which is really, really too slow um, to react. It's, it's, and I'm going to show you that right now. So we're in position control again, so I can instruct position. I'm going to just go between minus one and one. So take a look at the motor when I move the cursor, what is going to happen. And I leave it, see how it doesn't stop and start really super fast. It goes to position and slowly stops and it, it's really not in, it's not responsive. If I do it quick, right, left, right, left, right, left, it's not even able to follow um, what I want it to do. So we need to crank that up. It's set to two. Um, my recommendation here, it's gonna be anything between 100 and 200. I know I set mine to uh, 200, but just for you to see, we're just gonna uh, give it 50 for now and we're gonna do the same thing. See now it's, it's fast, it reacts to my, my slider, but it can be better. Um, let's give it a bit more, 100. There you go, it starts to be really nice now, but we're gonna give it 200 because that is what I found was a good value. So now, and you can hear the sound. Now it stops right away super sharp movement that is what we want 200 is the value that you need to put in um you can test that on your side as well uh i'm gonna do this from here just to see you guys that's probably the method that you're gonna use to configure that so i have the two commands here that's gonna set both axes to 200 for the filter bandwidth uh yeah input filter bandwidth so set boat to 200 and we're gonna save the config again and reboot. We are getting closer and closer to have a proper um, system. The last thing is to um, switch the, the control mode to step direction. And that is done um, through this command right here. I'm gonna do both axes at the same time so it's faster for you on the video. But basically, config enable step direction equal true. So that's going to set the input, uh, input mode. I mean, the, the config mode, or whatever you call that, to step and direction. Uh, on the RC1 version, once you set that to true, the system will not um, listen to anything other than step command. If you go into position control and do that slider again, it's not going to do, it's not going to work. It's not going to go calibration for cogging. It's only going to respond to step command. On the master version, 
it was not doing that, but like I said, soon probably that RC will become master. So just keep that in mind. So we set that to true. So we have enabled step direction. Now we need to disable the UART function. If you are on the master version, that is the command you will need to run. So config enable UART equal false. Okay, on the release candidate one version, they divided that between um, the A, B, and C. Oh, I have an extra one here. So A, B, and C, uh, those are the, f I don't know. I don't know what they are, <laughs> so I'm not going to try to explain that, but I know that's how you disable UART mode. So you disable that on the three, on the three places, and uh, you're good to go. And another thing we need to set is the turns per step. On the master version, um, the way to do it is to configure the number of turns per step. So how many turns a step will equal? Um, on my side, I'm, I'm, I'm set currently at uh, 4,000 steps per turn. So if you do the calculation, it's going to be 1 divided by 4,000. That's going to be 0 0.00025. So you're going to use those command, and that's where you're going to put it. So just keep in mind if you're on the master version that there is a 50 kilohertz limit of step pulse per second. What that means... Um, it is that the O drive can only process 50,000 steps command in a second. So you're going to have to do your math and find out, if you're on the master version, you're going to have to do your math and find out how much micro stepping, uh, or how much step you want to go with the maximum speed that you, you, you want. I think, I can't remember if we've done the math already, but on my side, I want to go 1,000 millimeters per second. I'm on a gear ratio two to one. So what that means is a full turn of the motor will give me 20 millimeters of movement. So if I type that in divided by 20, it means if I want to go a thousand millimeters per second, the motor will spin 50 turns per second. And on the release candidate, they up that limit of 50 kilohertz to 250. So five times. So I'm set to use 4,000 steps in, inside Clipper on my uh, Clipper firmware. So 50 turns per second, multiply that by 4,000 step in a full turn, I'm at 200,000 steps per second, which is 50 away from the limit. So I could go even higher, maybe with 4,002 um, 4,002 multiply by 50, yeah, even higher, maybe, well, 5,000 would be the hard limit to, um, sorry, um, 5,000 multiply by 50 turns per second, 5,000 multiply by 50, that's 250 steps per second but that's i don't i don't like to play on the limit so i've set myself to 4000 uh steps per turn so back to our config here if you want to use 4000 you can go higher if you don't plan to go a thousand millimeters per second if you're on the master um master version just do your math based on the fact that you can't go with 50 kilohertz or 50,000 steps per second Calculate that to the maximum speed you want to go, and that will give you what's your maximum micro step that you can use. So that command to set that will be on the master version. It's going to be turns per step equal 0 0.25. On the new RC1, and I like it better that way, they've changed that. Instead of turns per step, it's going to be um, micro step per turn. So the same value as Clipper. So if you put 4,000 in Clipper, you're going to put 4,000 inside the O-Drive board. And there's also two commands that you need to run in order to activate that. And that's the config circular set point to true. So we're just going to do that for both axes. You don't need to do that on the master server, on the master release. And then we're going to set our step to 4,000. 
okay. Um, so basically now on the master uh, release, all you need to do is to set your steps and to enable the step deer, the step direction mode and to disable UART. So you enable step deer, you disable UART, and then you set your steps per, your, your turns per step, and you're done. On the RC version, there's one more step that we need to go, and it's because all the GPI opens are not uh, configured by default. So what that means is that we need to tell the system that we're using pin 1 and 2 and pin 7 and 8. So the way to do that is to tell, okay, pin 0 will be, that's going to be for uh, direction or step. I can't remember which one it is. Uh, let me just go back to O drive docs. Um, pin out. Yeah, pin 1 is going to be for step. Pin 2 is going to be for direction. Same thing for 7 and 8. You could use another pin if you'd like to remap them, but just use the ones 1, 2, and 7, 8. So we're going to set that one, the first one, to pull a digital pull down and pin 2 to simply digital mode. We're going to do the same thing for pin 7 and 8, which are the other axis. And we're going to tell the system that we have step on pin 1 and direction on pin 2. And same thing for axis 1. We have step on pin 7 and we have the direction pin on pin 8. So I'll just run all those together. If I can copy paste again. There you go. We're all set, ladies and gentlemen. All we need to do now is to save our configuration and we are ready to proceed okay so everything has been saved and set in the O drive now we need to set the same thing I mean to clipper now I'm gonna show you what I've done to set the, the 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 steps per rotation in clipper so this is my clipper configuration I'm set to 4000 like I said um, and uh, I'm not using micro steps because really O drive doesn't care. It just care about what a step is. It can be a full step, a micro step. For, for, for O drive, it's just a step. So set your micro step to one. So that's going to be the mul multiplicating factor and use the full step in your configuration. So 4,000 in my case. And that's about it. There's nothing else that you need to do. Uh, obviously, if you were running TMC driver, just comment that section out. You don't need the uh, driver section anymore. You just need um, the clipper uh, configuration. Now, another thing to note is the uh, direction pin. In clipper, if you want to reverse that logic, you can put a exclamation mark in front of it. So when you're going to do the homing, the first time you do the homing, just be careful. Uh, keep your finger right next to the uh, emergency stop. If it doesn't ohm in the right direction, then go into your 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 uh, your clipper config file and change, put a dash, reverse the logic here between X and Y. And if you don't find that this is going to solve the direction, then uh, what you do is on the O drive board or on the 3D printer board, just invert axis one for axis two. So unplug the step and direction connector, change to uh, X and put Y on X and vice versa, or you can do it directly from the O drive board. Just, just switch both axes and see now if it's ohming in the right direction. Um, there's a third option if you want to switch the direction is on the uh, motor, uh, sorry, on the encoder cable that connects to uh, the O drive board. There is the pin that are named A and B. You can switch pin A and B, just flip them uh, remove the pin and switch A and B. That's going to reverse the logic. That, that's going to reverse the direction. So there's a couple ways you can, you can work your way to have the good direction on the homing and on the printer. Because once you get the, the, the right homing direction, you're good to go. So on this, I'm just going to show you. I'm going to put on the belts and I'm going to show you a full, um, a full startup and a homing with the O-Drive. All right, we are ready to par on. 
belts have been connected to the motion system. If we've done our job properly, um, it's going to be fine. Just for don't forget, keep your hand close to that emergency stop just in case you never know <laughs> those motors have quite a bit of power so what I normally do I make sure that my print head is somewhere where it has some place to move because every time the system will boot it will try to find that index and it will do a maximum of one turn so in my case one turn movement might be that much movement okay so about 20 millimeters on 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 this side and on this side um, there's also a way that you can instruct O drive uh, to do the index search on the other uh, direction. So that way it's going to move this way and this way. So basically you, you can define what way you want the index search to, to, to run. That command is on their website. I don't have it by heart, but yeah. Another possibility is just to switch two cables two wires on the phase wires, the, the, the big three wires that goes to the motor, just switch them uh, on, on the O-Drive board and that should, in theory, change the, the direction where it's gonna try to find the index. So uh, in my case, it's going right and back. So we're just gonna test it. Um, we'll be with me on the power switch and I keep my hand on the power switch. motor calibration index fine okay so you, you see how much movement that gave us um, so it's it's just a, a, a good habit now I just place my motor I, I mean my print head in the middle and uh, that way I never have a crash okay the operating system is booting so we'll be able to test a home and hopefully if we've configured everything, we're gonna be fine. So I am going to, and I keep my finger night close to that emergency stop. So I'm gonna just do ohm X. There you go, that's what you need. So X has been home, let's home Y. There you go, that's it. And if you've configured your, you do your math properly on, on the uh, calculation for the steps uh, per turn, or yeah, you're going to be able to, um, let me switch the angle, yeah, so if I request 25 millimeter in, in Y, so that's moving tw another one, that's about 25 millimeter, you can always use your, your caliper and measure. Um, but normally if your math was was good you're you're already good to go so let's do 25 in X another one notice how quiet that is that is super cool so we are done the system is ready you're just ready to print or ready to do whatever test you'd like um, I was really excited to do acceleration test so that was my first test when I when I got the system up and running and this thing is capable of super crazy acceleration. So that's really awesome. So I think we're done for tonight. Um, I know it was a lot, a lot, a lot of information. Um, heck, I don't understand all that information myself. So I don't expect you to understand this uh, the very first day. You'll get used to that O-Drive tool and how the menus are, um, are are displayed to you and you'll get used to the system in general and it's only going to get better in time. At first I was very overwhelmed and I was like wow this thing is so much so much complicated that I don't know but after a couple hours of playing with it um, it was it was super cool and I, I like it a lot now. I know old drive force coming, probably a new interface. They're probably also working on getting that uh, GUI working better. Right now it's not too bad. Um, it works good as you could see in that video. But other than that, all the rest is just uh, tuning. Um, go ahead, play with the gains, play with the, the bandwidth. Um, what I recommend is that you print a, um, a cube um, and just print walls and see the quality of the walls see how much uh, the corners are sharp 
if you don't have sharp corners go ahead increase your velocity gain a bit just by a bit um, increase your position gains also maybe uh, play with the bandwidth play with all those settings um, just make sure it doesn't vibrate a lot when you do that if, if it vibrates it's not good you're, you're having too much gains um, so yeah try to tune it the best as you could you'll also notice if you're not set properly you're going to notice really ugly vertical artifacts on on vertical walls the the walls that are um really there's no curve so you could you can see vertical artifacts um you can reduce them by by tuning it properly i had that issue i was able to tune it um in a way that it was um it was okay not perfect at slow speed but at higher speed the cogging effect is really not that important and it's super smooth uh, however at lower speed it's still um, showing some some artifacts uh, i don't have a printed part in front of me um, but i can probably hmm. no i threw all of them in the garbage so um anyway i'll i'll let you discover what those are but i can probably show you on on this guy here um this was printed with o drive let me zoom in a bit um hmm, hard to see yeah there you go you see that here um this was before i was able to tune it it's really not that bad if you get those then try to play um see the second part was better um and i even got it better with time and and tuning so uh you're gonna have to tune and play with it depending on the motors also maybe you're gonna get better motors for a 3d printer maybe those motors are are, are too big um so that's why i'm really happy that people are getting interested in this product so the more people we get on o drive system uh the more knowledge the 3d printing community will will gain and we'll be able to share our findings and this thing will just get better and better and i really think that um uh servo motors or brushless motors with encoders like that which i i, I think we can call them servo motors i really think it's um uh, future of 3d printing if that if we can get them affordable like the drive system is and it's going to be really awesome so uh hopefully you can install and make that work if you have any questions go ahead and comment join uh the o drive community on discord there's a channel for that super awesome people um they're really really always answering questions the staff is really really cool um so i'll be also there to answer questions if people have questions and i uh, would like to um thank two peop two person in in particular um the first one is paul uh uh wet melon uh wet melon sorry it, that's his uh his name on on o drive and on discord um paul has been tremendous help he's given me lots of time and i really appreciated it very awesome guy and there's also another guy which i'm not going to pronounce the name because i don't want to <laughs> it's a guy from Belgium and he has a, a name I can't I don't know how to pronounce but I'll put his name in the description he's also helped me a lot at the beginning to get started um, thank you a lot man you you saved me a lot of time so uh, on this I'm not gonna take any more of your time I hope that you appreciated the video that it's gonna encourage you to go to O drive um, like I said it seems to be really complicated but all the commands that we did tonight, you can do this, the entire steps that I did, you can do this in one big copy paste, or maybe not one, but two, three copy paste, then you reboot, you're good to go. It only takes a couple, less than five minutes, I would say, to set up when you have all the commands pre-entered and you just copy paste them. The longest part is just the pre the, the, the cogging calibration it takes about five minutes to do but other than that all the rest you can simply plug in the commands that i'm going to show you in the comments below and then you're good to go so on this folks i wish you a good night i really need more sleep <laughs> so um we're gonna see you in another video i'll show you some um some print some print that we can make with o drive um and also i got this new this new bad boy here that I'd like um, 
to see how it's printing. I didn't have time yet to play with it. Just a couple prints, but so far so good. So stay tuned on this channel. Please subscribe if you want to keep uh, having uh, technical videos like this. And if you want to see, oops, sorry. If you want to see uh, crazy speed, crazy quality. Well, we're trying to reach quality and speed. It's not always easy, but that's the, the goal. So this is my printer for fast prototyping. So again, have a good night. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being there on my channel. I really appreciate it. Have a good night, folks. Bye.